Welcome to the <coughs> whatever this is for unit 17. <coughs> I guess it's a YouTube by the time I'm done. <coughs> what we're going to look at in unit 17 is we're going to look at chemical equations. How we write them, what they mean, uh, how we balance them, and things of that nature. The thing to look for before you look at this section would be sections 5.1 and 5.2 in your textbook would be helpful to see. So we are look at, as I said, a few things. One is writing chemical equations, balancing chemical equations, and what the volume relationships when you have gases in a chemical relation, what, what you can figure out from there. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at these things. And this is not a terribly long show. We'll kind of take a look and see what happens here. So when we write chemical equations, really what all chemical equation is, is it's a, uh, it's a shortcut. If I talk to you all the time in English about what's going to happen in a chemical reaction, it gets really hard to deal with because there's lots of words and lots of things going on in there. And so what we do with, with chemical equations, we shortcut that type of thing. So what we're going to do is take and get rid of these big, long verbal descriptions. We're going to use chemical formulas, and we're going to have sort of a shorthand notation for how we look at a chemical, chemical equation. <coughs> so <coughs> before we start, something that's helpful to know as you go through here is as we look at elements and how elements occur. Lots of elements occur in different ways, but there are some famous ones you need to kind of be aware of. You kind of have these ones down so you sort of know what goes on with them. And in particular, the ones I'm talking about are what we call the diatomic elements. A diatomic element is an element that occurs in nature in such a way that it has two of its atoms bonded together. So for example, the oxygen that you breathe is two oxygen atoms stuck together. If you reached into a vat of oxygen and grabbed an oxygen atom and pulled it out, you'd have another one stuck to it. They're diatomic, two atoms stuck in there. Nitrogen is like that. Hydrogen is like that. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are all like that. Those are ones you need to get a handle on. You kind of need to know. So we say, okay, well, I'm going to react this much chlorine, this much this. You need to know that chlorine is diatomic. It's going to change its formula. When you look at the seven diatomic elements, I have them here on this periodic table, abbreviated periodic table. Down here is the hydrogen right here. He's sort of an oddball over there in the, in the left-hand column. But now if you look over here, and in this box, this black box I drew, there's nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and technically acetine, but nobody has it. It doesn't exist very much at all. So stick, stick with iodine. So there's seven of them. One, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven. I also point out, if you look at it, that these six over here sort of look like the number seven, don't they? Is that the right direction? Yeah. Those look like number seven over here. So it kind of helps you see what that block looks like. These, when they occur, are diatomic. Their formulas will be N2, Cl2, Br2, I2. They always have that diatomic look to them. So now, let's go into what we do when we write a chemical equation a little bit and see what happens. So here's an example. It's not a very complicated one to start with. We're going to take solid so sodium and chlorine gas. We're going to react them to form solid sodium chloride. Okay, that's, that's the reaction. And you can spell it all out, and you can write it all out. But really, if you had to do this a lot, you, that's, a mu that's too much. You don't want to have all those words involved. In it. So what we do is we take and start abbreviating a little bit, because we know that we can use chemical symbols to make things shorter. So I can take the sentence I have up here, and where I have sodium, I can just put in Na, because that's the symbol for sodium. Where I have chlorine, I can put in Cl2, remembering that chlorine is a diatomic material. So it's Cl2, and I'm going to form sodium chloride. And because you're good at naming things now and writing formulas, you know that sodium's in group 1, chlorine's in group 17. When they go together, they go together in a 1 to 1 ratio and make NaCl. And so you can make sodium. So all I've done going from first line to the second line down here is I've replaced the words of the materials with their actual chemical formulas. <coughs> Now, to make it a little bit better, <clears throat> instead of having to write solid and gas and solid over here, what we can do is abbreviate that. So if sodium's a solid, in parentheses, we put an S for solid. Chlorine's a gas, we put a G for gas. NaCl is a solid, we put an S for solid. And if you ever have a liquid, you'd use an L. Looks like this. And sometimes we have solutions. We'll see those in a later chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll see those in a later chapter. And we have solution, we use AQ, which stands for aqueous, a water-based type of solution. So to get rid of even more words, we can get rid of the end by using a plus sign, like this. And we get rid of the react to form by using an arrow that looks like this. And now here is your balanced equation. Uh, forget the little dots out there. I think those are bullets in here. You can pretend it's a Lewis structure or something, but, but it's okay. Um, so, but we're not quite done. If you look at this carefully, I have one sodium on this side, and I have one sodium on that side, that's good. 
But down here, chlorines, I have two chlorines, I only have one chlorine on the right hand side. Well, we know that we can't make or destroy chlorine atoms. Dalton told us that two, over 200 years ago. You can't make and destroy these atoms, they just recombine. So I have to have the same number of atoms of each kind on each side in this reaction. The thing we do to get there is what we call balancing. And so in, the, in this reaction, what we just looked at, looks something like this. I have sodium here, I have chlorine here, I have sodium chloride on that side, there's my chemical reaction. Over on the left hand side where these guys are, these are called reactants. And over on the right hand side is called the products. Products are things you make, right? And that's what this reaction tells me. I'm going to make sodium chloride. So you can think of this a couple different ways. Let's think about it this way. On the reactant side, we have one sodium atom and we have two chlorine atoms over here. But on the right hand side, we only have one sodium and one chlorine. And so they aren't quite balanced out. So to balance it, what we do is we put coefficients out in front of the symbols. If we don't, you're not going to mess with subscripts. You're not going to do anything different here now. We know sodium chloride is NaCl no matter where it comes from. What reaction comes out of it, it's going to have that form to it. It's that formula for it. And so we can't mess around with the subscripts. The only thing we can do is go through here and put out numbers in front of here to make sure the same number of each kind on each side. So if I take a look at what I've got here, if I look at my sodiums, one here, one here, that's pretty good. Two chlorines here, but I only have one chlorine here. The only place I can put a number is out in front of NaCl. I can't put it back here. I can't do NaCl2. Not going to work. We don't have NaCl2. Doesn't exist. And so over here, I'm going to put a two out in front, so I'll get two chlorines. So I have, when I do that, I'll have two chlorines here because the two carries through everything in that formula. I'll have two chlorines, two chlorines here, but now I have two sodiums. To get two sodiums on the other side, I come back to here and I put a coefficient in front of sodium and say, okay, you're going to be a two, and that way it'll be balanced out. And your final equation looks like what we have down here at the bottom. <coughs> I'd like to tell you the authentic absolutely work every time approach to this but it's sort of a trial and error thing all you're doing is a game you're playing really to get the same number of atoms of each kind on each side by putting coefficients out in front of the different materials the reactants and the products let's look at another one and I, this one I drew the lines out front to kind of stress to you the only place you can put numbers is in the front of these things and you look at this and go oh this is pretty big I don't know about this one one thing I point out to you in here is is that if you um, you know it's down here I pointed out this is <coughs> famous in lithium and Apollo 13 because lithium hydroxide removes carbon dioxide and then you can get your carbon dioxide level back down anyway. But if you look through this equation, sit back, put your feet up, rest for a minute, look at it. I have oxygen here, I have oxygen here, I have oxygen here, and I have oxygen here. So if I start by trying to balance my oxygens, I'll go absolutely batty doing that. And so what I need to do is think about things that are easy to see and what you'll find out in these equations we're dealing with is that when we balance these equations, they will balance easily unless you've made some huge mistake somewhere or even some small mistake somewhere. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Yeah, we're going to ignore the oxygens because they're all over the place. I have a lithium over here, but I have two lithiums over here. So that means it probably ought to come back to this side and put a two in here. And then I have a two in front of my lithium. Can I draw in here? I think I can draw in here. Let's see. Uh, is that my pen? Uh, laser pointer pen. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm going to draw in there, so I'm going to put a 2 in there. Oh, look at that. Two lithiums there. I don't care about the oxygens yet, but now I have two hydrogens in here. So I have the two hydrogens showed up in here. And so now what I want to do is go back over here to this side. See so where my hydrogens are. Well, there's two hydrogens here. But look at it. I've got two hydrogens over on this side. So my hydrogens are balanced. Look at my carbons. My carbon has one carbon here. And I've got one carbon in here. Don't get all mixed up with all these subscripts. They go immediately for that. There's three oxygens here. There's only one carbon and there's two lithiums. And so I have one carbon on each side and that looks good. And so then I have to check on my oxygens to see what happens inside of there. And so when we do that, oh, I guess I continue on the front page. We'll keep going here. I have two oxygens from here. I have two oxygens from here. So that's four oxygens all together on this side. That's four oxygens, not 40. Four oxygens. On this side, I have three oxygens here. I have one over here, and that means I have four oxygens over here. And guess what? I balance there. Okay, so it's kind of a trial and an error sort of thing that you're going to do in that. How do I get that there? So let's go back here now, and 
oh, this just kind of finishes off. We just talked about this, okay? One of the comments I make at the bottom is probably helpful to pay attention to, and that is that if you are having to work too hard at this, be aware of the fact that you may have some issues somewhere. You might have done a, uh, made a formula wrong, you might have done something along the line, multiplied wrong, added wrong, done something wrong in that process. And so uh, just be alert to that, if that's that possibility. Okay, so let's take a look at a simulation of this in FET using FET. And again, I'll put the link out in the Blackboard part and you can play with around with this if you want to. And if you don't like it, you don't have to mess with it at all. But they're kind of fun to look at. And this one, it's a, I have the link here. You won't be able to see it uh, in your You'll probably get to it in the video, but it'll be in the Blackboard, and you will also have in the learning outcomes where you can click on it and go to it. <laughs> and all you do is pull it up and then just click download, and it'll go. But let's take a look at this simulation and see what happens. It's got a couple things going on in it. Okay. One is an introduction to how this thing works, and then the other one is a game you can play. If you like, if you like games, get off your phones playing all those silly games. You go play a chemical balancing chemical equation game. How much fun could that be? So I'll go into here, and what we're going to do is look, and they only have a few different kind of reactions in this one to look at, just to kind of get you used to how this thing works. Uh, when I look up here, I can go to Tools, and I could, if I wanted to, I could see this thing in a balance. It shows me when things are balanced, which is, sounds a whole lot like balancing equations. Or you can see a little bar chart. Let's do the balancing thing. Okay, let's do a balance. Let's see what that looks like. So now we're going to balance this equation. Come in here and start looking. They all have zeros in front, so I don't have anything going on. I'm going to have to put something in to make this work. But you'll notice here I have two nitrogens over on the left-hand side, and I have one nitrogen on the right-hand side. So how am I going to get the same number of nitrogens on each side? That's right. I'm going to come over here to the right. I need to have one nitrogen here just to get started. And then over here I need to have two nitrogens because I have two on the other side. So I'm going to crank this guy up to two, and now you can see my nitrogens are balanced in here by looking at the teeter-totter. Okay. Now, look at your hydrogens. I have two hydrogens here. I have two pneumonias here. These are ammonia. Two times three is going to be six. Remember, if I, have, if I have three in each one of these and I have two of these, that's six, it's not five. You're not adding them. You have to multiply the coefficient times the subscript. And that means this guy here can, needs to add up to six. So since they come in twos, I need to put a three in here. And as soon as you get it, you get the smiley face and everything's good. Okay, so you can come and do that if you'd like to. You can also, in this uh, version of it, in this particular game, you can come into here and you can play a game. And you can take different types of levels. Uh, I think I was on level 5 here. Let's, let's start over again. This is what you'll look like when you come in. Pick level 1 or level 2 or level 3. You can have a clock running. I don't know what the speaker does. Probably just some kind of buzzer or something. So level one, you come in here and say, okay, I need to balance this equation. You start, you get started on it. One of the things you might notice about this one, hydrogen all the way through, isn't it? Got hydrogen all the way through. Let's skip it until the end, until we need to worry about it. I have two carbons over on the left. Oop, two carbons over on the right. That means I'm already there. So I have to have one of these, and then I have to have one of these. Keep my carbons matched up, and I have six hydrogen here. The other side, I have four hydrogen, and if I just make this a one like that, I should be good. You get another smiley face, and you're good to go. So you can play with that. You can practice a little bit and see there's different levels, three different levels. I'm not sure how many... I think there might be five equations in each one, so that's like 15 equation balancing things you could practice if you wanted to. All right, let's go back to the show. Where is the show? Right there. Okay. So for some reason, my laser pointer is staying on permanently. Um, I don't know if I can get that off or not. Yeah, I just don't want to mess with it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is talk about a different law still related to balanced equations. And so, again, I have lots of text on these slides, but you can read those at your leisure. You don't have to listen to me read them all the way through. Guy Lussac came up with what's called the law of combining volumes, and it's very important. This is 1700. It's very important to notice this is all about gases. This is not about liquid solids anything else. Those are a mess. But gases, and this is one of the things that got us thinking way back in the 1700s about what is matter made out of? Why does it work like this? So what Guy Lussac observed was this, is that if you have your gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure uh, in, in a reaction, in, for example, in this one, I have two hydrogens here, I have an oxygen here, I have two waters over here, everything in here is gas. <coughs> Everything's gas. 
And so what it tells me is it tells me it could tell me that two molecules of hydrogen react as one molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water could be telling me that. Or we're going to see later on it can tell me two moles of hydrogen could be reacting with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of water could be telling us that. But what Guy Lussac pointed out what it also tells us is as long as we're under the same conditions, which would hard be hard not to be if I'm in the same container, is that this also tells me that two liters of hydrogen will react with one liter of oxygen to make two liters of water. So if you're dealing with gases, you can use those coefficients directly to talk about the relationships between volumes of those gases. And this extends in, this is a two to one to two ratio. So that means you could use <coughs> gallons. If I had two gallons of hydrogen gas and one gallon of oxygen gas, it would react to form two gallons of water vapor, water gas. Okay, and so it's a very important thing. Um, you might notice in here, and just kind of set you up for things that may come up later, is if I start with 2 liters of hydrogen here, but I had like 8,000 liters of oxygen gas over here, I still could only make 2 liters of water, because as soon as I used up my 2 liters of hydrogen, I've run out of hydrogen. I can't make any more. And so you can put any volume in your hand down here, I'll show you cups. You can have cups in there and things like that. So, uh, based on Guy Lussac's law and, and experimental observations, Avogadro, and this is around the time Dalton was coming into play too, he explained the law of combining volumes by stating that equal volumes of all gases, when measured at the same temperature and pressure, contain the same number of molecules. Okay, equal volumes of all gases. If I have five liters of gases all lined up, they're the same temperature and pressure, they have the same number of molecules. It probably ought to be particles, because it could be molecules themselves, or it could be atoms just by themselves. Helium, neon, argon, some of those types of things. And so, he kept going on it, and what he ended up with is what we're going to be covering in the next unit is finding something about the relation between masses of material and the numbers of molecules that you have in that sample. And that would be the end.